Aloha and welcome to Amen Podcast, where we preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how it applies to everyday life. I'm Lokelani, your host, and I'm joined by my husband, Alex, who's the preacher of Amen Podcast, and hit the title of his sermon today is Androphobia. If you don't know what androphobia is, it means the fear of people. So we're continuing in our series in Matthew, looking at chapter 10, verses 26 through 33. I'll read those verses verses, and then Alex will take it from there. We're using the ESV version today. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before man, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Amen. Just want to say a quick prayer before we start. It's been a very hard week, been a very hard couple of weeks. We've been sick. Um, We're really feeling the weight of having five kids. Luke was just a immobile love sack of joy for the first couple of months. Now he's all over the place, like Mm -hmm. going upstairs, going downstairs, he wants to be out in the garage. He wants to be in the grass. He wants to stand. Uh, he's just like super crazy. He's like excelling in his growth because he just wants to like be with his older brothers and sister running around the house. And so we like don't really ever get like a minute to ourselves just to just like think about the podcast. Uh, and so we're either up very early at, in the morning or up very late at night trying to formulate what is God saying in this next part of Matthew? And this series has been so good for us because it's always just what we need um, that week. And so this week, just talking about the fear of people and how we don't have to be afraid of those who might try to impose their will upon our schedule Mm. um, because we have a mission. Mm. The mission is um, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how it applies to everyday life. And we can't do that without first preaching in our own home to our own kids. And so um, we've gotten back to family worship, family devotional every night before bed. Uh, We just very quick, it's like a 10 minute thing. We like play a a Christian YouTube song, we sing it, and then we read a little verse, the verse of the day from the Bible app. And we just kept it simple. And it's been such a beautiful way to to end our day. Um, But it's just been very hard. And so if you guys can keep us in prayer, uh, Lokes had nausea all week and headaches, and I've had just extreme like fatigue, and um, we're just really feeling God telling us to simplify even more and to um, to make sure that our kids don't fall by the wayside. And uh, yeah, it's been difficult. And so even now, I'm like, I want to record this podcast because it's what I love to do. But there's times when we sit down to record, and I don't feel like preaching. You know, it's like it's spiritual, it's a battle, it's this heavy thing. Um, I love it, but it's heavy at the same time. And so uh, let's pray before we jump into it, because I don't want to mess this message up. It's very important. And so um, let's do it. Father, thank you so much for how you call us to extreme loyalty to you. And we pray that you would grant us that uh, favor, Lord, of just being able to be um, distinguished amongst other people for our desire for you. Mm. And we pray um, that you would just help me to speak now and use us in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. And with simplification, we've realized like over the year of just being away from social media, that God has stripped away a lot of the distractions. And over the year of not doing social media, he shifted my focus. Lokalani's focus was already here, but he shifted my focus from the 99 to the one. You remember when Jesus... Mm -hmm says, which one of you who loses a sheep will not leave the 99 and go after the one? Because the relationship is the relationship between sheep and shepherd is 
an intimate one. If you even think back to the story of David, uh, when he cheats on his wife and is intimate with Bathsheba, what does Nathan the prophet say to David? He says this story about this family who loved this little sheep like it was a pet. Mm. And that right there shows a relationship between Israelite shepherds, good shepherds at least, with sheep. They were close to them. And so which uh, shepherd, if they were a good shepherd, would not leave the 99 and go after the one? And that's been convicting me that when I post a video, when I record a video, what's my focus? The 99 or the one? An example of that this week, I, was, I really wanted to record this video about lukewarm Christianity. And I had this idea of calling it Hannah Montana Christians. Mm -hmm. And I thought like, oh, that's cute. That's clever. Because Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, they have this like, you know, back and forth in the duality in the show. But I thought, okay, is that a title for the 99 or a title for the one? Mm. There's some guys that go to our church that, that roll and do jujitsu and they're like 30 something years old, are they gonna click on a video that says Hannah Montana Christians? No, they're not. So I'm not thinking about the people in my life when I'm titling it something like that. I wasn't really thinking about the people in my life when I was blowing up and going crazy on TikTok. I was thinking about the 99 and reaching the masses instead of reaching the one or two people closest to me. And I feel like after a year of being off TikTok, God has like, shifted our focus um, to doing that. And so we made an Amen podcast page. It's just going to be Amen podcast clips um, to, you know, encourage you guys, stuff that you can send your aunties and your uncles. Uh, we're not going to have a, we're not ever going to make a personal page for me and Loki Lani. We ever, always want to keep things under the brand of Amen podcast because there is a healthy fear of people and there's an unhealthy fear of people. An unhealthy fear of people looks like obsession at times. When you're obsessive over something, that is a byproduct of the fear of people, the fear of man. Mm. When you're not obsessive and you move through life freely, you're almost apathetic towards materialism completely. That shows that your heart is fearing God and not fearing people. A healthy fear of people would be you having a, a reverential respect for how dangerous living for people could be. Mm. It's that, you know, Jesus has, he says this, he says, knowing their hearts. Wow. He would not go a certain way. He would look at people, know their hearts, know how wicked they were, know how they were trying to pull him away. There was a time where they wanted him to, to keep on making bread for them after he fed the 5,000. Be our bread king, keep making bread. He knew their hearts, discerned their hearts and went a different way. That's called a healthy fear of people. It means a, a reverence, respect for the danger of living for people. Mm -hmm. And there's an unhealthy fear of God. And there's a healthy fear of God. An unhealthy fear of God would make you bury your talent and turn the other way and not serve God how he's called you to serve him. A healthy fear of him would know that he's so powerful, yet so gracious, so uh, vengeful towards sin, yet so merciful that I submit myself to him. Mm -hmm. Look at these first couple of verses, verse 26 through 28. It says, so have no fear of them. Who is the them? The them is the people that Jesus is sending the apostles out to. Jesus is sending the 12 apostles out into the world to preach the good news, to do miracles that prove that the good news is true. And as they go into these Israelite towns, they weren't going to the Gentiles, they were going to the Israelites, to the lost sheep of Israel. Those who had not met the Messiah, had not encountered the savior of the world, He's going to, he's sending them to them and saying, have no fear of them for why nothing is covered that will not be revealed. Nothing is hidden that will not be known. I was listening to a rapper's song yesterday and he said, when I die, all my secrets are going to be buried with me. No, they're not. Nothing that is covered will remain hidden. Anything that is hidden will be revealed. He says, what I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. He's saying, don't fear men because fearing men is going to make you hold back from preaching God's word. Being afraid of people 
is going to stunt your spiritual growth and quiet your spiritual gift. Mm. That's a problem. True freedom isn't being able to do everything. True freedom is having the power to do the things that you know you should do. So everyone in the world is saying, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. I don't have to obey God's laws. You're not really free because the things that you want to do deep in your soul, you can't do. Do you think wicked people want to be liars forever? Even if they enjoy lying, they don't want to be known as a liar. Even if they enjoy stealing, they don't want to be known as a, as a thief. Even if they uh, enjoy Instagram, they don't want to be known as a clout chaser. They don't want to be known as addicted to Instagram. So freedom isn't being able to just say, I don't have to listen to anyone. Freedom is being able to say the things that I really want to do deep in my soul, I have the power to do those things. The apostles wanted to be out, everyone besides Judas, every, they wanted to be out there preaching the good news, casting out demons, healing the sick. Why? They get back to Jesus and they say, Jesus, you would not believe it. Even the demons are subject to us. So they were having a good time. They were enjoying it. But if they were going out there with fear of people, they would not be free to do the things God had called them to do. Mm. And that is so sad. How many of us listening to the sound of my voice want to serve God in a big way, want to live in the joy and the purpose of the kingdom of God, but we're so afraid of what people are going to say and how people are going to look at us, we will not do it. That's not freedom. He says, if you hear me whisper it to you, proclaim it on the housetops. Don't hold back. Verse 28, and do not fear those who can kill the body and cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy the body and soul and body in hell. I butchered that, but what he's saying is this. How dare you fear people who all they can do is kill you. Mm -hmm. The worst they could do to you is kill you. That's it. The best thing to happen to a Christian is death because we get to be with the Lord. That's why Paul says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I get more when I die. It's a promotion, death. So don't fear men who all they can do to you is kill you. Fear God because he can destroy. Notice he didn't say kill. Because God has the power not to, not to just kill. He has the power to destroy. The difference between kill and destroy in the Greek is destroy is eternal. Kill is temporary. You die and you go to the grave. Destroy is eternal. Fear God because he has the power to destroy both soul and body in hell. It's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of when you fear God, you cannot fear man. Because when you stop fearing people, you realize your value. So verse 26 says, have no fear of them, or sorry, 29, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs in your heads are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. You are valuable to God. You are his. That's why you're valuable to him. What Jesus is saying is if you're going around fearing people, you're never going to understand your value. You cannot. So why does he give the example of sparrows? Sparrows were an inter interesting animal in Jewish culture. They were used for food, but only for the poorest of the Israelites. Two sparrows would be sold for a penny. And he says, not one sparrow is killed and chopped up and barbecued and brought to the marketplace without God knowing about it. So if God knows that about the sparrows, how much more does he know about you? If his eye is on the sparrow, his eye is certainly on you. The Mona Lisa of his creation, his masterpiece, he calls you. Why? You are his Imago Dei. The image of God is on you. 
Without Christ, it's a broken image. With Christ, that image is restored. Either way, whether you're pre-Christ or pro, pro, uh, post-Christ, you have the image of God on you. You are valuable to God. Not because you have it all together. Not because you're so cute. Not because you're so smart. Not because of where you come from. Not because of what college you went to. Not because of where you live. Not because of your talents. Not because of any of that. That stuff doesn't make you valuable. So all the false teachers and prophets out there saying, you got it going on. You're a prophet. They don't understand your worth. They don't see your uh, masterpiece. You know, all this stuff, trying to pump you up and itch your ears, all this stuff in these mega churches. All that stuff is bogus. You're dead. You're dead. You are, without Christ, you are dead. You're dead as a doornail, Smalls. That's it. But with Christ, you've been made alive. But even when you're dead in Christ or dead in your sins, you still have the Imago Dei. You're valuable because you belong to God. What makes you valuable is who you belong to, not what you've done. Every single baseball is made exactly the same. But a baseball that belongs to Hank Aaron or Babe Ruth that baseball is more valuable than all the other baseballs that have been manufactured and stitched exactly the same way. Why? Because who they belong to. You understand? You and I is just a regular baseball, pumped out like every other baseball in the world. But because of who we belong to, the greatest of all time, mm. that's what makes us valuable. That's what makes you valuable. So he's saying, if he cares for the sparrows, if a sparrow hits the ground and all and, and God knows about it, that means he knows about every single time you fall, every single time something bad happens to you, every single time you subject yourself to the fear of man, every time you start to get a little afraid of what people are going to say, God's watching that. Yeah. Not only that, he says, the number of your hairs on your head are numbered. Do you know how many hairs are on your head right now? Depending on your hair color, you have anywhere between 90,000 to 150,000 hairs on your head. 90,000 to 150,000 hairs on your head. And every one of the hairs on your head is numbered. It's crazy because for some reason, blonde people have the most amount of hairs on their head and black hair has the least amount of hair. So they're around 90,000. But the point is this, regardless of your race, regardless of your hair color, God knows the individual number of hairs on his children's head. And remember, Jesus is talking to the apostles. He's saying, you guys, you're, you apostles, God has chosen you, you're his children. He knows the number of hairs in your head. And God knows yours as well. Wow. What that means is you're valuable to God. When you stop fearing people, you start to realize your value. We're so busy thinking about what people are gonna say about us, how people treat us, what people think about us, that we don't have enough time to stop and think about how valuable we are to God. Not because we're so cute and dandy and smart and good looking, it's because we're His. You see, when you start to subject yourself to the fear of people, you start thinking, my life belongs to their opinion instead of remembering that your life belongs to God and what he says about you. And in a way, when you're thinking about the fear of people and thinking about what people are gonna say about you, in a way, you have subjected your life to their opinion because you're spending your life, your hard earned time, thinking about what they're gonna say about you. So-and-so probably isn't thinking about you, but you've given up your life and subjected it to their opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you've lost sight of the visio Dei, the vision of God. His eye is on you, his vision is on you. And when you start to stop fearing people, now you get a glimpse of the visio Dei, the vision of God. Now your eyes are on him. This is what we all want. This is what Moses wanted. When he said, God, let me behold your glory. To see God's glory is to see your own value. 
To see his glory is to see your maker, to see the image that you've been made in. It's to be one with him. Now, look at, look at verse 32. It says, so everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. How do we get rid of the fear of man? Androphobia. How do we get rid of that? How do we start living with fear of God? It's all about loyalty. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. Jesus was denied so we could be acknowledged by God. That's what this is about. If you stop living for the fear of men, you will be able to acknowledge God before men because you won't care. What you've been given is God's authority. He tells us when he sends out the apostles that he had the authority to send them out, the authority to give them the power over demons, to preach the good news, over sicknesses, over diseases. Without authority, what would it look like for them to walk in that authority, walk in that spiritual gifting, and then be afraid of men? You couldn't do both, but to push the fear of men aside, you would be able to, they would be able to walk in confidence and acknowledge God before men, regardless of who they were. Jesus says, if he says to the apostles, if you guys go and do this, I'm going to acknowledge you in heaven. And we're going to see how Jesus acknowledges the 12 apostles. When you look at the, when you read the book of revelation mm -hmm. and John has a vision of these like 12 thrones and all this stuff. It's crazy. But these apostles are going to be acknowledged before God. Mm. And they're going to be acknowledged before us because of what they started. We're here today because the apostles chose not to live in the fear of man, but to live in the fear of God. Mm. They jump started the church, went out into all the world. It made disciples. And because of that, they're going to be acknowledged by Jesus. If we do the same, we will be acknowledged by him. He says, so everyone, not just, so you apostles who acknowledge me before men, he says, so everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge them before my father in heaven. Now this is putting eternal consequences on the fear of people. Don't you see, if you live by the fear of people, you will not be acknowledged by God in heaven. Mm. That's heavy. And that could be any day. You could go to sleep tonight and wake up at the crossroads of Jesus acknowledging you before God or before, or him not acknowledging you before God. Verse 33, but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father in heaven. The question of the New Testament is not, do you know God? It's, does God know you? Mm-hmm. That's the question that the whole second half of the Bible is asking. Not, do you know God? A lot of people claim to know God. It's, does God know you? When you get to heaven, is Jesus going to say to you, depart from me, for I never knew you? Is he going to look at you and say, who are you? You're not welcome here. Or is he going to look at you and scream your name and yell your name? Hey, come over here. Or I never knew you. It makes no difference whether you know God. It's does God know you? For God to know you means you are intimate with God. You are close to God. You have a deep relationship with God. Mm -hmm. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father in heaven. How do we do this? How do we reject the fear of men? We have to see Jesus mm -hmm. and his acknowledging of the father mm. always before men. He never once put acceptance and popularity over his loyalty to God. Never once. Even when he uh, was tempted to choose acceptance, to choose popularity. Even when he was tempted to believe that your life would be better, your life would be easier, more people would like you if you just put them over your loyalty to God. Even in those times, he never did that. Mm -hmm. He always stayed completely committed to who God 
sent him to be, and that was our Savior. The more you look at Jesus being treated like a worthless sparrow, you know that they used to skin these sparrows, barbecue them, skewer them, and then sell them as kebab for a penny to the Israelite people. Well, Jesus was skewered and devoured Mm. on the cross. Was he not skewered on the cross like a kebab? Was he not torched by the wrath of God? Was he not devoured and punched in the face and had his beard ripped out and speared in the side and spit on? Was he not devoured so that we could be treated like a child of God? Mm. What business did the son of God, the child of God have being treated that way? Our business. He switched places with us. He was treated like a sparrow so we could be treated like a child. Mm. The more you look at that, the more you can ask yourself, am I being loyal to God or am I being loyal to man? And the more you look at Jesus being treated like a sparrow so you could be treated like a child, you'll have the power to be loyal to God over man. That's the only way you're going to have the power. If you truly believe he did that for you and you truly believe he went that far, and you truly believe you rose from the dead, that gives you all the power to to know that why would I fear men when the worst they can do to me is kill me? The worst they can do to me is kill my reputation. The worst they can do to me is kill my body. The worst they can do to me is kill a a relationship in my life. That's the worst they can do to me. Mm -hmm. God can do way more than that. Mm -hmm. He can resurrect. If I'm on the wrong side, he can also devour me and destroy me for eternity. It's about perspective. Christ had that perspective. He never once lost that perspective. Unless we look to him, we won't be able to have that perspective because looking to him means you're looking at your value. Looking to him means you're looking at your future. It's living with eternity in mind. Mm -hmm. If you try to just look around at people and look around at yourself, you try Mm -hmm. to look for inner strength, none of that's going to work. Don't you see why this whole idea of, okay, instead of being fearful of people, you just need to love yourself more. You see why that doesn't work? The more introspective you get, the more fearful of people you get. The more you look inside of you and try to find a reason for why you don't have to be afraid of people, you don't have to be obsessed with acceptance, you don't have to live for popularity, you don't have to chase clout. The more you look for that inside of you, the all you're gonna find is more darkness. Mm -hmm. All you're all you're gonna find is more stuff to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. All you're gonna find is more reasons for why you think you need people to accept you. Yeah. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. There's nothing good in you that you're going to be able to find. The deeper you look, you have to look to Jesus. In him are hidden treasures of yeah. eternity. In him is where you're going to find your true value. Because it means nothing if people love you because of how talented you are. At some point, there's going to be someone more talented than you. Yeah, It, is, it makes no... Uh, there's no point if people are are loving you and liking you because of how good looking you are. The Mm -hmm. Bible says beauty is fleeting. Mm -hmm. It makes no difference if people like you because of how smart you are. There's always going to be someone with a higher IQ. That's faulty. It's foolish. But if someone loves you because they, because you're his, Mm -hmm. that's true value. Yes. If someone loves you because you're, because you belong to him, that's true value. When everyone in the world might see no value in you, God says, I love you still because you belong to me. And I've taken the time to count the numbers on your head because every little hair matters to me. I remember when uh, all of our kids, all five of them, when they lose their, you know, when they cut, they get their first haircut, you usually get a Ziploc and you keep their hair for some reason. 
And by the fifth kid, it's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's kind of <laughs> weird. But at first, it's like, this hair is so valuable to mm -hmm. me because they'll never have it again. And I remember when they got it. And I remember when they got here. And to save those hairs means to just want to Ziploc a moment of their growth. And every little hair on your head represents growth to God. Every little hair on your head represents memories. and represents places that you've been, things that you've done. He's, he's, he's you know, TiVoing all of that. Some of you guys are too young to know what TiVo is. But he's remembering all of it because you're valuable to him. Every milestone, every mistake, every mishap, he sees it all because he does not have a memory that gets full. He does not get annoyed. He does not get uh, sick of you. He loves you. So much so that he would send his son to take your place. So much so that his son would willingly go and take your place because of the love that the father has for us, because of the, the love the son has for the father, because of the love the son has for you. This is where we can find true value so we stop living in fear of people. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you so much for how good you are to us and the change of perspective that you give us. Lord, we pray that you would free us from the fear of people and that we would be able to go out into all the world making disciples and being who you called us to be. Mm because of our value and because of the power of the resurrection and the loyalty that Jesus had to the Father. Help us to be loyal to you as well as we look to him for strength. Amen. Amen. This is the part of the episode called After the Amen, where we ask you a question to help you apply this message to your life. And our question for today is... What scares you about people? Hmm. What scares you about people? What scares you about people? I told Alex before um, we started recording this message, I was like, oh, well, you've already hit a nerve. Because <laughs> I didn't know what androphobia, I was like, what is that? And then he said, fear of people. And I was like, wow, I should have known that <laughs> word <laughs> after I was born. No, I'm just joking. I just, this is like my biggest struggle. And you guys know that if you our returning listener. I talk about this almost every week, I think. <laughs> but um, overthinking and fear of people, thats those are my things. But um, yeah, this is just so good. And what scares you about people? I think, you know, it should be nothing. Nothing should. And on a good day, I do believe that. I, I can truly say that I, I walk at that when I'm having a good day, when I'm having the right eternal perspective. And I think that's, that's for me personally, like that's when the shift happens is when my life or my mind is not focused on the eternal. Um, and I'm more focused or consumed or worried about, uh, earthly things, then that's when I'm afraid of people because I'm, just worried about what they can do, what they can say, what they will think, um, instead of just knowing that that doesn't matter. <laughs> Honestly, that's like, it's that simple. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like the opinion of people does not matter in our what God thinks of us and whether or not he's glorified in our lives and whether or not we are living lives that please him and honor him, that's what should consume our thoughts and our mind. And not in like this effort to earn his love, but out of obedience because we have experienced the life-changing um, love of Christ through what he's done on the cross. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, that's what scares me about people is I think that they have some sort of power over me. I don't know why, um, which in earthly situations people can, but at the end of the day, all of that will fade away. And so it's of too much value in my mind instead of focusing on the eternal things, which those are the things that will last literally eternally. Um, 
And so, wow. Yeah, this was so good. Just, I'm still processing so much of it, but I loved, um, what you shared just about him knowing the numbers of hairs on our head. And that's just so good for me to know that how much hair, at least 90,000 for me, (laughs) because like with each postpartum, you lose so much hair and it's like, oh man, I'm going to be bald after this, but like, there's no way I lost that much hair. Um, but just knowing like, you know, I love how you said the regrowth of hair, all of that, like, Mm -hmm is just so symbolic in our relationship with the Lord. And I'm experiencing that right now. And it can be so frustrating. I'm like watching these hairs grow in them. We live in Hawaii. So, you know, like the humidity causes these little baby hairs to flip up and I don't know what to do. And I don't know how, like, I want to wear my hair down, but it looks (laughs) crazy, you know? Um, But just even taking those small things, the part, this little part of postpartum with me and looking at, looking at it, um, through the lens of scripture, it's just such a perspective change. Mm-hmm. I think that's just what I'm getting for this is where is my mind? What am I focusing on? What's consuming my thoughts? Where is my perspective? Mm-hmm. And when I'm operating out of fear of people and my perspective is on the earthly and on pleasing others, um, then yes, like Alex said, I'm not using my gifts and that's when I'm most anxious, when I'm may turn to anger because of that anxiety or because of that worry. Um, And it's not good for anyone. It's not good for me, but it's not good for my neighbor. It's not good for my family um, if that is where my mind is. And so just having the godly perspective and knowing that we just to focus on today, Mm -hmm. you know, focus on today, tomorrow may come. Or it may not come. And if it does come, God's already got tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And we don't need to put, I don't, my mind doesn't need to be there. Um, and fearing what people, what man may do. And so. That's good. Uh, yeah. That's my response. Yeah. The most can. important, as, as I was thinking about what you were saying, it just dawned on me that the most important question a Christian can ask themselves mm-hmm. is who cares? Mm-hmm. When you're about to do something, Mm -hmm. whether it is for you or for God or whatever it is that you're doing, the most important important thing you can ask yourself is who cares? Am I doing this because I feel like people care about this and Mm -hmm. I want to appease people? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing this because God cares about this? Mm -hmm. You know what God cares about? He cares about your joy and his glory. Mm -hmm. He cares about those things. Those two things are what's best for creation. Yes. Joy doesn't mean happiness. No. It means you're unsinkable. Even in the darkest, most drowning of times, you are unsinkable. Mm-hmm. His glory is what best is what's best for us, is because that is what creation was made for. Mm-hmm. For the glory of God. Mm-hmm. We are most uh satisfied in him when he, he is most glorified in us. And so ask yourself, who cares? Yep. Who cares that I might sound a little religious or a little spiritual? Mm-hmm. You know, if I like live for Jesus or if I ask someone, how can I pray for you? Yep. Who cares if I wear this Christian t-shirt to school? Does God care? Does he, he cares about his glory. He cares about my joy. He wants that. So if he cares about it, then let's go do it. Mm-hmm. But if my motivation is people care about this, yes. people are going to like this. That's a bad motivation. Yeah. Our motivation should be his glory because that's where we're going to find our joy. Yep. And I think cares. I think a lot of people struggle with this too. Um, Like with friendships, like, okay, if I start living a life that glorifies the Lord and honors him and fulfilling the great great commission, you know, taking my part in that Mm -hmm. going along with like last week's message, like having, conversations about the Lord, you know, like with others, like, I think they're afraid that they, they'll lose their friends. Oh, this guy, like, he's like a killjoy. Like now all he has to talk, he takes his faith so seriously. All he wants to talk about is God or always has to talk. Mm -hmm. He always has to bring God into it. Why Mm -hmm. can't we just like, why can't he calm down? You know? And it's like, that's last week's message. Like Mm -hmm. it's gonna, the, the, um, 
the gospel will separate and Mm -hmm. you may lose friendships and that sucks. Yes. But one, it's good because if those are your friends and they don't, and they're claiming to be Christians, yet they're annoyed that you're always talking about Christ. They probably are not Christians. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, it's an opportunity for you to be around people who are like-minded. And even if you don't have that first getting in the word, Mm -hmm. you know, we're not with these people, but we see the lives of so many who have decided to live obedient lives. Mm -hmm. And that is our encouragement, you know, in those times of loneliness. I do believe the Lord will provide people to do life with. Mm -hmm. We don't have a ton of people to do that with, but we have our family. We have each other. We have both sets of our parents, you know, that's who we have right now. And, you know, the few friends that we have as well, but we don't have a ton of people in our circle who just love to talk about the things of God. Yeah. I think that's the difference between the narrow road and the Mm -hmm. wide road, which we've talked about dozens of episodes Mm -hmm. ago. The wide road makes it possible for you to have a bunch of conversations and to walk slow and have a leisure stroll on the wide road. And you're talking to everyone. You guys are having a good time. And, you know, ha, 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 hoo, hoo, hoo. You guys are having a great time. The narrow road is like single file at times. Yeah. It's like you can't have a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the wide road, things like bad things can happen on the wide road. Think about the wide road that uh, Joseph and Mary were on when they lost Jesus. Yeah. They're just so caught up in the hustle and bustle of everybody. They don't even, they lose Jesus. That's what the wide road symbolizes. Mm. You're so up in the heyday of the high road, the wide road, you end up losing Jesus. On the narrow road, it's you and Jesus. Yeah. Hand in hand, single file line, not a lot of time to talk, not a lot of time to, you know, have this great company and a lot of friends and to conversate. It's a lot of time of you being alone, Mm -hmm. walking through mountain passes, walking through Mm -hmm. dry valleys, walking through rainy cliff sides, because that's the road to heaven. Mm -hmm. If we're going to share in his glory, how could we not share in his sufferings? Yep. The way to heaven is identifying with Jesus, identifying with your Savior. How can you know who he really is and what he's really done for you if you've not identified yourself with him? That's what the the narrow road looks like for us. And so you're not going to have a ton of friends. You're not going to have, you know, dozens of people calling you, hitting you up all the time because that's the narrow road. Heaven is the time to have that. (laughs) Heaven is the time to celebrate. And we're going to be doing that for all of eternity. I'd rather do that for all of eternity than do it for the blink of an eye right now. Your life is a blink of an eye Mm. in comparison to eternity. So I'd rather be on the narrow road right now for a blink than be on the wide road of destruction for eternity. Yes. So good. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, we love you guys. and We love you. We want to know what scares you about people. We want to know. And then tell yourself, who cares? <laughs> yep, who cares? Ask yourself, who cares? <laughs> um, but thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Um, as always, if this ministry has blessed you, you can donate at amenpodcast.com. Um, liking this video on YouTube really helps us. Reading and reviewing on Spotify and Apple also just helps more people um, see this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, But we're just so grateful for you guys. And um, we just love that we get to do this. We love it so much. And so thank you for joining us. And until next time, go out and be the church. Amen.